Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. At the moment, I'm up here on my topsoil with one of my three almond trees which really struggle through dry summers. In today's video, I'm going to show you the two ways in which I'm going to increase moisture to these trees and I'm just going to give them a quick prune so hopefully they don't need so much in the first place and I'm hoping that they are happy enough to fruit next season. I have mentioned it before but the swale seems to be a little bit lower down this end and when it rains it collects quite a lot but then you notice that as you go along it just feels like it's a little bit higher up here where my almond trees are and the water doesn't collect near as much. So I think we need to just sort of scrape the top off the uh, swale itself, just so that the water spreads more evenly through the whole swale. And it's not something I wanna do by hand, so I'm gonna to attempt to do it with my tractor. Tractoring is not one of my skills, but I'm gonna give it a go, but I should be able to with my four-way bucket just scrape the top, maybe 10 centimetres or so, off this end of the swale. I've put this marker where I'm going to start to try and scrape out the top of this swale. My little bucket opens up and I should be able to just back along here and scrape as I go. Now, I haven't done it before, but we'll just see how that works. certainly made a little bit of a start. I've got some of the grass off and I'll just continue to work at it slowly. Well, I'm scraping the bare minimum off the top of this swale and I think the local wombat could be doing a better job. But I'll keep at it and see how we go. Down this end, it seems a lot more clay content and it's a lot harder to, to dig, but we're getting into an area where it's more, I think, a, a silty clay. And maybe it's just because it's a bit drier too, that I can, uh, I'm a little bit more successful in moving some of this soil. When you're very new to this, it takes a little while to get the hang of things, but I'm slowly forming a pile of soil, which I'm going to use down on my bottom swale. I managed to get a bit scraped off. It is fairly uneven, but I can come along and even that out by hand but I have got quite a bit out down here. And I, here's my other pile. I need to continue here. You can see this little robinia is quite small and hasn't really grown as much as some of my other robinias, which you can see down there. That's gets a lot more moisture and that one over there in the sunshine. So I probably need to continue from where I finished off there through to about this orange marker there that you can sort of see. And um, we can just sort of see how that goes. I don't have to do it all at once. I can just do a little bit and observe what happens and make sure that the water is sort of staying where we want it to stay. It's been about a week since I've been out here to work on this swale. I have done the, the bottom swale and used some of this soil and I'll leave a link to that video. But we're out here again on this beautiful autumn morning to continue. There's some rain coming so I really would like to get the hay onto the, this swale. I don't have any seeds to put on it, but the hay should contain some seeds which will help to reseed this area. It will take a little while to regenerate because it's mostly just sort of a clay base there now. 
but hopefully there's enough taken off the top just to hold some more moisture which should hopefully benefit the almond trees. So I just need to start at one end and then slowly move the hay over all the soil until this soil is covered. I'll go through and just lay it in piles and, and spread it more evenly once I've spread out the hay a bit. Now that I'm happy that the hay's been evenly distributed, I'll just spread it all out. I'm just trying to break up any clumps so we don't prevent any of the little seeds germinating by blocking the light. Using old hay is great because you don't have to worry about seeding it out. The seeds come out of this old hay, given some moisture, a little bit of warmth and some time. We should see grass returning to this swale. So not only does the hay provide the seeds and the protection for the uh, seeds on the soil surface, it actually protects the soil as well and helps build the soil. It will be organic material to feed the soil organisms and kickstart the rebuild of the topsoil because I've really taken that layer off. So it needs all the help it can get. And it will also retain a little bit of moisture so that the soil surface doesn't dry out as quickly, protecting both the seeds and the soil life. I felt pretty bad digging up this swale with all the grasses already establishing. So it feels pretty nice to have this job done and the soil once again covered. Hopefully we've got some warm weather and some rain and a bit of light to get things growing again. Now I can move on to phase two of improving hydration for these almond trees. But first I'm gonna start with pruning this almond tree quite a bit so that during the summer it doesn't have so much bulk that it needs to keep hydrated. I've kind of just let it go without any pruning. So I really need to get serious and get the level down so it's sort of lower and bushier. And hopefully with these different measures, it'll be happier during the summer. Now I do have a video in which I explained that I'm not a great pruner. That's when I was pruning my peach and apricot trees. And my skills haven't improved, but I'm gonna give it a go here. What I want to do is really take out the middle of this tree. So I might even cut right through there to leave this branch. I might take this one out here even that one there and this one here. And that should leave it really uh, clear in the middle. And then I'll trim down all of those branches to bring the height down as well. One lesson I did learn in my last video is that I need to take the weight out of the sort of the limb that I want to prune down. So I'll take it out up here and here and here before attempting to do a clean cut here because I did find with the weight, it just tears it. Um, now, someone also suggested I get a bill hook for doing a really clean cut, but I haven't got one of those as yet. So I've still got my little hand saw here. I'll do the best I can with that. So I'll take the weight out and pop this on the ground. That's going to be used in phase three of improving hydration for this tree. Now I was hoping to get that a little bit more angled down this way and I might still try and give that a go. I just want to have a clean wound so it's uh, got time to, to heal over properly before we get frost here. All right, I think that angle's probably a bit better now. Oh, hard work, this pruning. 
Next branches I'm going to take is this big one here and this one to leave this one. So I've got to do a similar cut to the one over here and angle it right down through here. So I'm going to take the weight out of these to start with. Now I'm just wondering whether I should take that out but I've done a very drastic prune so I might just leave it for the moment. I'm hoping that this prune does help the tree. I've given it lots of air in the middle as you're supposed to do with stone fruits which almonds are and this tree really hasn't produced anything as yet. I find in spring it gets lots of flowers and then as the season dries out, um, the flowers that have turned to little fruits, they all just drop off because it just gets too dry and the leaves all drop off and it really has been struggling. So I'm hoping um, with this as one of the three measures we're doing to help it, it will really thrive this coming summer. Now I probably don't need to say this but just in case I just want to remind you not to copy what I do here. I'm no expert so before you prune your own trees make sure you do consult an expert or watch a, a few videos to see how it's done or check back in a year's time and see if these trees are thriving before copying any of my methods. I'm just doing the cross your fingers method. Well we've improved the water sinking capacity of our swale next to these trees and hopefully reduced the need of the tree for water with reducing their size a little bit. The third thing that I'm going to try is to dig a compost pit for each of these three trees which will also uh, sink some more moisture in right next to the roots where it's needed. So what I'm going to do is just dig a big hole right here which is kind of on the drip line of the tree out here so not too close to where the roots will be currently but the future roots will be able to grow out to this point and it will be an access for those roots to a bit more moisture. On Greening the Desert with Jeff Lawton he did this in a very dry climate. They dug some pits and put in all the mesquite clippings that um, were, hard, were really prickly and nasty and they buried it all just as a way to get rid of it and they did find all the surrounding trees really benefited from that moisture and the nutrients that were sunk into the ground. So check out um, Greening the Desert with Jeff Lawton and see you know what he's achieved there. And I thought that that would be a good idea for these almond trees too. They could benefit from the, the compost and also the extra moisture. I'm just going to dig a hole and then fill it with all compostable ma materials. So I'll be cutting up the trimmings that I've had from the tree. I'll be getting some more trimmings off nearby trees and perhaps even throwing in um, a bit of the cow poo from the, the pasture area which is just next door. So the hard part is of course digging the hole. Ooh, especially with sticks in the way. Oh. Get all that the previous chop and drop sticks out of the way and that what should help. Okay now we're in. Oh, I really find my matic does a good job of digging holes. I'm better at that than using a shovel. I am coming across some of the roots here but if I just dig a, a deepish hole just in this section it won't damage too much and they'll soon grow back and love this spot. I'll be discarding the soil that's dug up. I'm just going to sort of layer it up here so that the water doesn't run off down the hill from this spot so it kind of will sit here longer. Pretty sure Jeff 
had made his holes really deep, but then he's got young people digging for him. I'm just gonna do a little pit like this. It's sort of 30, 40 centimeters deep, just over a foot maybe. And I'm just gonna fill it with um, organic material. And I might actually do a couple of these little holes for each tree. With the hole dug, now I'm just gonna fill it with uh, organic debris. Here is some trimmings from the tree. So we'll be using that. I've also trimmed a nearby acacia tree. So that's some pretty easy organic matter to um, gather. And cow poo from the paddock's pretty handy as well. That's just nearby. I'll be putting the woodier material at the bottom, then the leafy greens, and finally the, the poo on top, because my theory is the water um, the rain should wash that down and through. The leaves will break down and go through the, the woody layer. And then I can keep piling on top as I notice the, the pile sinking down. Okay, so you get the idea of it. I'm going to just be keeping piling up organic material into these holes and refilling as they sink. Now, the need for this is just so that the roots are better supported um, until the, the swale um, alterations sort of kick in. Swales are tree growing systems and they sink water. They slow the water, sink the water, and the trees in the berm um, have access to an increased amount of water that's sunk in by the swale. But it will take a little bit of time for my adjustments to benefit this tree. So in the meantime, I think a little nutrient moisture sink will help support it until the swale system really gets going. With tweaking the system in those three ways, I hope to create happier, healthier almonds. So check in again come spring and summer because I'll be updating you and showing you how they're going. Hopefully you'll find happy thriving trees. I'm going to get on with digging the rest of these holes and filling them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Bye for now. Just revisiting my dugout swale area up the top and it's doing what I hoped. Water never collected here um, previously. It would always just collect sort of down that end where there is water down there, but the water is also collecting here. It isn't quite even, so it is collecting uh, at different points along here. But right near my almond trees, we're getting quite a bit of pooling of water. And we've got little birds over there enjoying it all as well. So this water should sink in and hopefully help these beautiful almond trees.